Paul, we're standing here at Rotec Engineering in amongst all your machine tools here in your sort of 30,000 square foot of, of working area. Uh, the journey started many years ago and it's quite poignant that we have the star machines behind us here. Tell us about where you started and one of the, you know, one of the reasons these are instrumental in your business's success today. Well, we started um, 18 years ago was our first CNC purchase, which was, um, we basically started a small rented, rented unit over in Honeybourne at 250 square feet. We ended up expanding that where we had six um, cam autos, uh, BSAs and CVAs, and uh, we, we fitted them all out with Hagenock bar fees, so we made, we, even then we were obsessed with automation. And it's pretty noisy. Oh yeah, it was horrendous. Uh, but the problem I had, I couldn't get scalability on the business, so I just couldn't find the people that were clever enough to actually, or it, the skills didn't exist anymore to actually cam these cam autos, especially in this area, this is actually largely a fruit growing area. Um, Why do you think they didn't exist? Was it because they'd kind of expired? The 1989 recession had, had wiped out a lot of people and they'd gone into different industries. What happened? Absolutely. I mean, after the whole that industry, that, that, you know, the large industry of small turns, simple parts, you know, for typewriters, all that, as, as technology changed, all that industry kind of died off or went abroad. What happened for me was that I was having a problem where I just could not get enough people and, and enough hours out, out of these machines to actually suit my demand of repetitious turn parts. So then I talked, started talking to a company called Star, I'd never heard of at the time. Um, I managed to uh, remortgage my house and whatever else I did to actually get the first machine in, which was a huge struggle for me. I think it was, I think it was about £68,000 complete for the complete package, which is more than I paid for my house. And um, put this first machine, it literally transformed my business overnight. The first day the machine went in, we actually ran the part the first night the machine was installed, and we, I think we, made, we used to make these, well, we still make them actually, a small part called a stripper pin. I uh, think we made two and a half thousand pins in one night. I was, I was completely blown away by this. What, what did your wife say when you remortgaged the house and bought the star machine? I well, I guess she was okay with it at the time, you know, but I wouldn't have done it otherwise. But um, so I, um, within about four months, we got rid of all the cam auto machines, all the hogging up bar feeds, sold them all to various parts of the world, and uh, invested heavily and started going down the road of starting head machines. And it really showed me that really showed me the way um, as a manual machine guy. Um, really showed me the way with CNC. Then we started investing heavily in CNC machine tools, training people, getting good people involved. What was the main difference? The fact that you were able to get the parts off the machine far faster, uh, more reliably, more operations at once? Well, ironically, um, on the Star, the Star was actually slower. We could only make 250 parts an hour on the Star, whereas on actually making a part, I had actually, when I first started, I'd actually kitted actually, uh, uh, an old Ward 1A capstan with an air feed on it I'd made myself. And I could have produced 500 parts an hour on my own. So unfortunately, I ended up with carpal tunnel syndrome and repetitive strain injury after a few months. That, didn't, that wasn't really a good long-term plan. However, um, but the beauty of the star machine is just, it's just a relentlessness of it. It just goes and goes and goes and goes. And maybe at the time we were cutting a lot of um, EM1A leaded, and we would just run for weeks and weeks on the same tools, and we just produce producing parts relentlessly, day and night, day and night. And that's, that, that's, that defines the difference from the old technology, the new technology. So you didn't, you didn't essentially need to be there, did you? Whereas with the other older machinery, you, you did. You could press the button now and walk away. Well, what the difference was between the old Rotec and the new Rotec then was the fact that I had to go and I was programming, and setting the machines, coming the machines myself, making the parts myself, delivering them myself, doing all the sales myself. And I thought if I could get good people retrained on CNC machines, which were more available and more common, I could then go off and do, develop my business, do the sales, develop the customer base and scale the business, which is exactly what we did. Now, is the reason now that we are here in 2018 that you've got seven, eight, nine star machines maybe just down to loyalty, or does it go beyond that? Do you genuinely believe that these are the best machines for the job for you here? Um, I think loyalty is a word, you know, it's uh, something that people have to earn, and the staff certainly earns it through, I mean, even forgetting about the, um, you know, the great service you get from Star UK, and, and, and the not only the technical side of it, but actually spares, and you know, the machines are extremely reliable, they very rarely do they go wrong. Um, uh, for us, it's just, uh, it's all about, you know, they produce high quality parts and they do it relentlessly and they never go wrong. I think the Star are experiencing these days a, a, a lot of growth in the last two, year, two or three years, as you've probably heard. Uh, and a lot of that they, um, they put down to the fact that their service and support, obviously the machines are great, but their service and their support, their turnkey offering, their applications team, but is that something that you would need these days or because you're so 
uh, entrenched in their technology, you don't really need to, to tap into that, do you? Or do you still try and look at ways of improving things? Um, well, to be fair, I mean, although the technical side of it is important to have that, occasionally we would talk to them about if, we, if we've got a particularly difficult job, we haven't got experience with maybe if we're doing hobbing or some kind of difficult task on the machine, we might involve them. Generally speaking, we do most things ourselves. I think the, uh, the growth of STAR really to attribute to their service and support, while it's very good, is more to do with market conditions. And I think that the market conditions at the moment are right because the reason we originally went down the road with STAR and this technology was because it was so reliable and it gave us the ability to produce um, a lot of parts reliably, correctly, um, and use a lot of, run a lot of man, unmanned hours as we do regularly, uh, running through the night and weekends. The reason we bought STARS originally was not because we wanted machines capable of producing high-tech parts, although they are, we just wanted a lot of machines to produce simple parts. However, after the last recession, um, for various reasons, a lot of the work became more complex. Um, and that's really, that's been a real godsend for us, because now we've already had the technology to do that, we have the skills to do it, so we were geared up for making more, more complex parts on these small machines. Um, and while uh, the likes of some you know, foreign countries have been a real bane for us in terms of you know, uh, losing work to them. What's happened now is that the work is more complex, and in order to make some of these parts, you have to have a star or, or the equivalent, or you know, which is not there's not really much out there that's equivalent to a star, in my opinion, maybe one or two brands. Um, and whether those machines be in India, China, England, or wherever, it really makes no difference because they still cost what they cost. And really, it's about repaying the, that that uh, that overhead. Not so, you're not really paying a man to be on that machine anymore. So the kind of hourly rate. You know, per man, it's kind of relevant these days. And have you had the experience where you've lost work overseas, but and, and it's come back as a result of quality and control? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's a pallet of parts down behind me here, and um, yeah, we that job's been to India twice over the years, been to China once, and it always it's ended up back here because they can't. The quality is never quite right, and really, I think the, aggra the aggravation factor that the customers get with dealing with these foreign countries, for the sake of a few pence, um, is not worth. It's not worth it. Going back in the early days, you know, 10, 10, 10, 12 years ago, yeah, there were certain parts we'd be quoted. We think, you know, we'd be thinking they're charging in China what we're paying for the materials. It was impossible. But these days, it's not like that anymore. You know, we're generally within 10 or 20 percent of what the Chinese might be charging. And, and that's down to the fact they all need the same machines, and yeah. you and you've, you've got the skill here and the experience to make complex components effectively. You're you're going to compete. Uh, I think it is nine machines. Is it nine machines you got from Star? It's nine stars we have, yeah. And their latest machines are starting to uh, have bigger bar capacities. The ST38 is a much bigger machine uh, that has uh, turrets on it rather than the platens. And they, they're now bridging the gap between fixed head technology and sliding head technology. I'll be interested to know whether you see your business going that way because you've got some big fixed head machines and also the sliding heads here. Do you think there's a middle ground that you may, you may uh, you know, get into at some point yourself? Um, well, in fact, there is already. I mean, we've already, as we can see, we've already bridged that gap. We've been using three metre bar feeds on fixed head machines for many years and employing a, where Star weren't making larger machines, although we wanted them to. Um, we've gone down the road with other machines for manufacturers where we do use three metre bar feeds on them and we do, do run the machines lights out by just adapting the existing technology and making it work the way we want it to work using lessons we've learned from the Stars. Marks out of 10 then for Stars, not only their machines, but their service support and back up the whole shooting match. No, definitely got to be an 11, very good.